ברכתי הוו, בהשם והו שי, בהשם ורך הקודש. Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is called The Chosen Cluster and Other Topics. Now, this was a uh, part of the lesson I was going to do yesterday on the various topics. And um, I didn't get a chance to hit this particular scripture, uh, which Lord's will, we can touch on it um, this morning. Uh, but before I get into it, I was watching a few videos earlier. And I just, you know, just some observations I was making. I was watching this video here from Redacted, which I put in the description box. A uh, YouTuber kidnapped in Haiti, freed by Jimmy Barbecue, and Biden's narrative collapses. And uh, pretty much this individual here would show you Esau, boy. Um, they, they, when, when it comes down to, you know, researching individual groups and all of the ins and outs of, you know, and the different groups, these devils, they, they're thorough in, in, in their research. Um, but he was going into how this one individual, uh, young Arab uh, American, uh, went down to Haiti to meet with Barbecue to do an interview with him. And um, on his way there, you know, he had to end, he had to land north of Port-au-Prince in another airport. And the next day, he started driving and was kidnapped by another group. And they pretty much held him like for 14 days. And, um, you know, they were showing how the individual that got kidnapped, you know, sent messages back to America and to the social media. And eventually the, the, uh, somebody called Bar Jimmy Barbecue and uh, eventually got him to get the, to get the guy released. And so, you know, so on and so forth. You can watch the rest of the video if you want to get more details. Um, and pretty much when I was watching this, right, like when we saw barbecue before, right, barbecue was, was uh, pretty much, you know, wearing regular clothes. You know, from what I can remember that I've seen, you know, I've seen them just wearing like regular, regular clothes. So there's another point in here. I'm trying to see if I can find it right here. Where... I'm looking at this guy, I said, wait a minute, ain't you supposed to be this, you know, this individual that out there, you know, rev some type of revolutionary, you know, ex-cop, what the hell are you doing wearing a, a, sh a shirt, button-down shirt with a tie? That's Esau's dress, you know, which shows you all these individuals, they're all in bed together, man. Like the scriptures say, the, the uh, rulers of the earth, the kings of the earth, you know, they're pretty much they in bed with America. You know, so, you know, all, all this stuff about this guy barbecues against the system and all, which I'm not saying he's not against Esau and, you know, the wicked shit that's going on in Haiti, but what the hell is he doing wearing a shirt and tie? You know, just something that crossed my mind when I seen this is just like, just don't, don't, don't add up. All right. And, you know, I just want to just mention a few words on that. If you want to watch this video, it's in the description box. Another video I was watching was uh, Luke Radowski. On uh, We Are Change, it says, hold up during the eclipse, they're spraying something in the sky. And pretty much he was talking about the chemtrails and st certain stuff they were spraying, you know, in the sky during this, you know, uh, solar eclipse. And what they're saying too now is a lot of people are saying they had headaches and feeling weird and strange from, from you know, this eclipse and whatever the case may be. Now, whether that's a psychological, you know, some psychological ill shit, <laughs> or if it's something that was actually sprayed on these people while they were out there, it remains to be seen, you know, because they're talking about this whole, you know, bird flu that's coming and, you know, and all of this stuff. So could that be what it's about? Could it be, you know, that they did that and, and then just setting the people up for, you know, a couple of weeks later to a month later or whatever the case may be to show symptoms and, you know, be all fucked up and spread that shit around? It remains to be seen. But we know that 2024 is a hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. And uh, as the elder from, Elder Hawad from North Carolina put, 2 Corinthians 2.11, at least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Right. Because... This goes into anything that we deal with. You know, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Now, the scriptures say, be not ignorant in any matter, small or great. You know, so from the smallest things to the biggest things, you know, we examine 
what's going on in the world and couple it with the scriptures. Um, so, you know, that was it on that. I just wanted to men make mention of that. So if you want to watch, both of these videos are on, uh, in, the, in the description box. If you want to watch it, you know, feel free. But what I want to get to is the main point, which I call this lesson, The Chosen Cluster and Other Topics. This is the, the title that came to me prior to starting. So I looked up the word cluster just, you know, for a definition to start off with. This is a group of similar things or people positioned or occupying closely together. Now, in this case, it's not so much as being close together as far as shoulder to shoulder, but as far as, you know, what we know and, and agree on uh, spiritually, scripturally. Um, let's go real quick to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And this is why we don't deal with unity camps, because unity camps are united because they are all Israelites, not because of doctrine. And, and you cannot join just because you are the same people. You have to be able to unite, you know, in solidarity with everything, you know, having the same mindset. The scriptures say, can two walk together except they be agreed? And you can't walk together with somebody that has different, a different opinion than you have as far as what you're teaching. Because if you're both on the street and you're both teaching, if one, if a person comes up to ask a question and uh, there's two conflicting or three conflicting, you know, views on it, it depends, the person's going to get the answer depending on who's speaking at the time. And that's not going to work. First uh, Corinthians 1 and 10. And then the other one standing by, he's not going to say, well, you know, I disagree with that because it's really this. No, he's just going to let it ride because they're going to want to be PC so they can keep the peace because they're all Israelites, but they have different doctrines. It don't work like that. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, because the Mosai is not the author of confusion, and neither is the son, Yahweh Shai, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly, perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. And you can't do that if you have conflicting views. All right, so this cluster here, well, we're using it because it like you have a, a cluster of grapes, and a cluster of grapes, they're all you know, you know, most for the most part, they all touching each other, you know, all huddled together. But in the case of the truth, we're dealing with the elect that are that cluster of the Lord that are closely knit together by the doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And that idea came through this, uh, through this, uh, uh, sp yeah, not speaking, but reading, the Bible reading. You know, I was listening to yesterday, and I was able to do, use one of them in the lesson yesterday, but I didn't get a chance to get to this one. Now, when you read the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, it's talking about the Most High. It's talking about, you know, the, the, the shuttle ships, you know, the chariots. And the, as you read on down, uh, a seraphim, which in this case, in this particular chapter, is talking about a, uh, a, uh, an angel. In other chapters, it's talking about the missiles. In this chapter, is talking about an angel, which took the, the tongs and took coal from off the altar and, and uh, you know, pretty much cleansed Isaiah's mouth, his lips, you know. And as you read on down, that angel or an angel uh, was um, tasked with blinding certain Israelites, all right? And this is why Jake can't get it. There's an actual angel out there blocking Jake from getting to this knowledge, whatever it may be, some, whatever distraction, you know, the angel uses to, to not allow certain Israelites to get this knowledge because this knowledge is very precious. It's, uh, it's just like uh, when you go back to Genesis, the third chapter, where the Lord put the, the uh, cherubim with the flaming sword Meaning that this, to protect or keep anyone from getting to the tree of knowledge of good and evil so that they can't understand it, get, get it, and then be perfect and live forever. Because that's, you know, the Most High is, you know, He knows both good and evil. The angels know both good and evil. All right? And that's the, the mystery of, of uh, balance is to know both sides but only operate on the right-hand side. You see? 
So Isaiah 6 and 11 says, Then said I, Lord, how long? So how long are these other Israelites supposed to be blinded for and not understand? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. You know, now this is dealing with today in America because this place is going to be totally annihilated by, uh, by thermonuclear destruction, the missiles, and also by the lasers from the chariots. It says, and Yahweh have removed men far away. You know, you can take this back to, during a time of, you know, uh, when the Babylonians came in to destroy uh, Jerusalem at that time. But we're dealing with today here in America. It says, and there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land, right? Because this land is destined for destruction. And the only ones that are going to be delivered are the elect of the nation of Israel, of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. But the point is here, but yet in it shall, the, shall be a tenth. Now a tenth is a remainder, all right? What, what remains. <clears throat> and it shall return. Now the word return goes back to the Hebrew word shawab, which means to return, to turn back. You know, to, to return to the Lord, right there, shawab, right? It says, and shall be eaten as a, as a tail tree. Now, this eating is not talking about, you know, physical eating, but it's talking about the knowledge, this knowledge, you know, being that fruit or that food that they would eat. Um, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 so you could understand. This, that was parabolic talk. Jeremiah 3.15, and I, and I, meaning the Most High Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you. With knowledge and understanding. All right. And this is how it's going to be eaten. All right. So, but yet, and it shall be a tenth. And back in Isaiah 6, 13. And it shall return, meaning turn back to the Lord. And shall be eaten as the tail tree and as an oak. Whose substance is in them. Right. So the substance is what? The knowledge. And the them is who? The elect. So the, the, the knowledge that is in the elect is what's going to lead them to salvation. Let's go to James chapter 1 and verse 21. And it says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. So this word is very precious and very important to keep. All right. So the elect are going to have that in them. They're going to have what the scriptures call the M-A-R-K. In the book of Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, which goes back to the Hebrew word thawah, which means exemption from judgment. Or when you go to Revelation, the seventh chapter, and it speaks about those that were sealed, it's the same concept or the same, um, so yeah, the same concept or the same thing. It's just one of them is in Hebrew and the other one is in Greek, but they're synonymous one with the other. The seal in, uh, Revelation 7 is the same idea as the mark in Ezekiel, the ninth chapter. All right? Totally different from, from uh, the, the mark in Revelation 13. So, going back, let's read this again, Isaiah 6, 13. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and it shall be eaten as a tail tree and as an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, in other words, when it starts to flourish... And, the, and, and, and you're able to pick the fruit. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. And this is the point. The holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So what I thought about when I, when I heard this, right, was I thought of you go out, you know, you, you, know, you, you, you uh, break up your ground, you plant seeds, you cover it up. Then the rain comes and you you know you're constantly nourishing and watering it and watching it, and eventually once the, the the vine grows or the tree grows or whatever the case may be or that fruit grows, there's a harvest process, and in that harvesting process you will go through and you will pluck and pick the good fruit, and put it into baskets, but the bad fruit it, you can't do nothing with it, so you don't you don't gather that you don't gather the bad fruit you gather the good fruit and you always in every harvest you always have 
you know, stuff that goes bad that falls away or that's eaten by insects or, or, or animals or whatever the case may be. But then you have those that are choice that are that are not that are gathered, you know, for whatever you if, if whether you're selling or whether you you know replenishing stuff in your house to eat or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> so that's what I thought about. So it's it's like a basket of good fruit that was gathered. Okay? And that's the elect. The fruit is the elect. The basket would be the chariot of Yahushai that the elect are going to be gathered into. You know? Oh, this is a good one too. Uh, Ecclesiastes 15 and 3. With the bread of understanding shall she feed him and give him the water of wisdom to drink. Beautiful, beautiful. And shalom to you, to you brothers out there. Yahweh Bashim Al Shah broke a thumb. And shalom to the few sisters that still are sticking around. You know, you know, shalom. <clears throat> All right, so now that that's taken care of, I went to Isaiah, the fifth chapter. This is like one, I, I like this chapter because it goes into the vineyard of the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. This is Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1. And you have to remember. This here is, like it says, a parable. <clears throat> it's a representation of the Lord nourishing and bringing up children, you know, in this, in this knowledge, in this truth, through the law, statutes, and commandments that he gave to Moses to give to the children of Israel. But just like a husbandman, you know, plows the field, sows the field, and then watches the field, and anything that grows that's not supposed to be there, he gets rid of it. Any weeds, you know, anything that would harm the crops, he would remove it. And that's what the Lord did perfectly. Perfect. And, um, but somehow it, it was led astray. Let me just get this precept that just came to mind. And then we can, uh, I'm going to go back here. And then if, if it comes back up, then we'll, we'll go into it. Isaiah chapter 5 and 1. Now will I sing to my well beloved a song of my, uh, my beloved touching his vineyard. So the beloved, well beloved, and beloved is the most high, Yahweh Bashem El Shai. His vineyard is who? The nation of Israel. When we jump down to the seventh verse, for the wine, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. All right, so I'm going to, you know, we'll get back to it just to, you know, let you know that it's talking about the Israelites. It says, my well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. The vineyard are the Israelites. The fruitful hill is Israel, the land of Israel. Jerusalem being the center of all of that. This is the best land, the, the most arable land, the most um, fruitful land on the planet. All right? This is one of the most fruitful lands on the planet. This is what the... the um, Scholars call the fertile crescent. All right, when you go back to Abraham and Lot, Abraham was very rich, which means his servants, you know, his nephew, they were rich. They they had a lot of, you know, they had a lot, you know, they had a lot of substance, and that caused the servants of Abraham and the servants of Lot to have that contention with each other. So Abraham said, "Look, there's plenty of land here for us." You know, pick which way you want to go, and whatever way you go, I'll go the opposite way. That way that we won't have this friction. So Lot looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah, which is going down towards the you know the Dead Sea, and he saw that it was very well watered, all the greenery. So then he picked and chose that area to to uh, graze in. You know, so that shows you that that land is very f fertile, very fruitful. So going back to Isaiah five and two, and he fenced it. And gathered out the stones that are right. So in other words, he put a hedge around it. You know, he made sure that the land was, was perfect. He made sure it was the best soil, the top soil. It, it didn't have any stones in it. It didn't have anything that would hinder things from growing. It says, and planted it with the choicest vine. Right. And the choicest vine, which are the Israelites, were planted with what? With the knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua through his law, statutes, and commandments. Which made it noble. See? But it says, and built a tower in the midst of it. You know, what is the tower in the midst of it? That is dealing with the prophets. 
And the reason for it was to warn them, to guide them. If there was danger coming, let them know what was going on. And also made a wine press therein. It says, uh, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes. And it brought forth wild grapes. So this, this is also, this goes hand in hand with Romans, the 11th chapter. This is a good chapter to go to to prove that that, that uh, olive tree, which this is talking about grapes or the wild you know, olives. We're talking about Israelites that were in a wild Gentile state of mind. All right, this is another good one you could go to. Now, it says it, that it, he fenced it, you know, built a tower, set everything up beautifully, and he looked for the grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. That's where Jeremiah 2 and 21 comes in. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, meaning the choices of the vine, the choices seeds to bring forth the choices grapes. You know, it says holy a right seed, meaning the whole nation. Because he gave the law, statutes, and commandments to the whole nation. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? You turned like the stranger. You turned like the heathen. How? How is this possible when you were given all the instructions, you know, on how to be this beautiful, fruitful, noble, uh, righteous, pious, holy people? All right, so going back. Isaiah 5 and 3. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof. And this is what happened. This is why when you go back to the northern kingdom, they were taken down by the Assyrians, uh, Shalomanassar V. Why? Because the Lord took that hedge away. And in process, the different uh, Assyrian kings and rulers that came into power after Shalomanassar V also brought other people, other heathen and nation, different nations into that land later on after 2 Kings 17. This is why sometimes you hear about Esar Hadan, you know, and others. Because they were doing the same thing. They were just bringing heathens into the land. And that's why by the time when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, he told the disciples not to go to the Samaritans because you had too many heathens up in there. But you did have Israelites mingled among them. It says, and it shall be eaten up and, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. Right, so eventually Judah fell. All right, they fell, you know, the southern kingdom fell to the Babylonians. All right. It says, and, it, and I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged. Right. Because once a land is waste, if you don't dig it and prune it and, and you know, and cultivate it properly, it's not going to yield forth fruit properly. You know, you have to go through the whole process of breaking up the ground, removing any stones, you know, making sure everything is good. And then after everything is good and plowed and perfect, then you can put, plant your seeds and then you'll get a, a good crop. But there shall come up briars and thorns. And that's what happened. These nations came up in there and, and were in the land instead of us. All right. And then when you go back to, I'm not sure if that's Deuteronomy 7, where it speaks about these nations being thorns and briars or something along those, those lines. You know, that's another way you could prove that this is talking about the nations. And also talking about these wild ass Israelites. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. That's right, because it will not be nourished. And what is the rain in this case? The the knowledge of this truth. Remember, the apostle Paul said, Paul planted, Apollos watered, but the most high gave the increase. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And eventually the whole nation fell. All right. The uh, northern kingdom to the Assyrian Empire, the southern kingdom to the Babylonian Empire. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. All right. So now what is happening now is that the Lord has a, a, um, a choice, a special um, seed 
that he's gathering, which are the elect. And only the elect will get this knowledge. They will, they will be the only ones who understand this truth. But the rest will not. Uh, when we go to Isaiah 65 and 8, right? It says, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh Bashem Shai, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servants' sake, that I may not destroy them all. And thank the Lord Yahweh Bashem Shai for the elect of the nation of Israel. There's a scripture I believe it says, Unless the Lord had left us a remnant, I believe that's in Isaiah 3. We should have been like Sodom and Gomorrah, meaning we would have been totally destroyed. It says, And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, which is Yahweh Shai first and foremost. Then you have underneath him, on the earth, you have King David. And mine elect, the key here, mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. All right? So the elect are going to receive this knowledge. So the elect... Or that choice chosen cluster that are going to be delivered to water, brother. This is it right here. Yep. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left us uh, unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Right. Meaning destroy, not a bunch of moles. So, we got one more verse to read here, but what I want to do is go to this word elect. Because the nation of Israel is the elect of the Most High. But among the elect, you have an election also. All right? And that would be the elect of the nation of Israel. So the word is Bachayar, which goes back to the word Bachar. Chosen, choice one, chosen one, elect of the Most High. All right? So these are the ones that the Lord put the Spirit in before the world was even created to receive this message. To receive the truth. Now Isaiah 65 and 10. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks. And the valley of Achor a place for the, er for the herds to lie down in. For my people that have sought me. Right. So the Lord is going to give the people that have sought him. Which are the elect. Peace. That's why King David said he leadeth me through, through the still. How does that go? Uh, let's go to Psalms 23. Right, Psalms 23 and 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, which is this knowledge is truth. He leadeth me beside the still waters. See? So when all hell breaks loose, the elect are going to be protected. Now, we always mention this. You're going to have some elect that's going to be killed because or deleted, you know, because that's the way they're going to glorify the Lord. But they'll be the first ones to be raised up in the chariots along with the others that have died. But... For the most part, the elect will be protected. There will be that special hedge around them that will not allow them to, to be destroyed. Because the Lord said so. For my people who have sought me. Now let's go from there to Isaiah chapter 10 and 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob. So there is a remnant. There is an elect that is going to... Uh, that is going to um, make it through. Let me see. Let's see. Remnant is the word sha'ar. Rest. Residue. Remnant. Remainder. Those that remain. In other words, the elect. That have been selected. Or elected by the Most High. And it shall come to pass in that day. That the remnant of the Israel. And such as are escaped of the house of Jacob. Shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. But shall stay upon Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. The Holy One of Israel. In truth. You know. And that's why it's important. To receive. Maintain. And keep this truth. To the end. Because this is the ticket to salvation. This is why the Apostle Paul said it. He said, uh, you know, continue down the things which I have learned and has been assured of. You know, you can't allow, you know, I mean, of course, if you're a part of the elect, it's not going to happen. You know, I wish I said my sheep hear my voice. But if, when, when, you, when you're bouncing from camp to camp and from this platform to that platform, 
you're going to get confused because you're going to have so many different varying opinions on different things that you're not going to have any stability and you're going to you're just going to be that straw in the wind <laughs> inside joke but it's true it says the remnant shall return meaning turn back to the lord even the remnant of jacob unto the mighty power for though the though, though thy people israel be as the sand of the sea yet a remnant of them shall return the consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness, right? Because the consumption decree meaning that there's a certain number of elect out there that the Lord is going to seal. And that's why the Apostle Paul said in Romans 11 chapter, matter of fact, let's get there. I'm going to hold on to this. Let's go down to the 25th verse, Romans 11, 25. Father, not brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, least you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, the ones that knew that they were Israelites, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, until the Israelite foreigners that were to receive this knowledge will be brought back in and brought out of that wild olive tree status or state. All right? And then when these Gentiles, which are Israelites, are brought in, the number of them that are the elect, and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written, because the Lord had... An election among the ones that knew that they were Israelites and an election among those that didn't know that they were Israelites, that, that were Israelites. So in these times, we all didn't know that we were Israelites, although some brothers may have been brought up to know, know certain things. But as far as the truth is concerned, the whole truth, 100 percent, we were blinded to it. You know, and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer which is Yahweh Shai, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Right. Because you have these individuals talking about that certain Israelites are going are gonna to burn in hell and all kind of madness that's going on. All right? So, then it goes on to say, For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Because the scripture said that thy people shall be all righteous. All right? So let me come back up here. So let me go back to Isaiah. Chapter 10 and 22. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord power of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of all the land. Right. And when that consumption comes, the elect are going to be taken up and delivered and the rest are going to be burnt up and destroyed. Uh, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden, meaning Esau's burden, shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing, because of the oil, that special Isau, you know, that special Thawa that's embedded inside of the elect. That's heavy. Now, let's go from there to Romans 11 now. Romans 11 and 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. Meaning the ones that knew that they were Israelites. But the election have obtained it. Meaning the ones among Israel that knew that they were Israelites. The election among them obtained it. Hence, the uh, 11 disciples and eventually Matthias, which was the 12th. Uh, um, the Apostle Paul, the men that were, that were with him so on and so forth and the rest were blinded that's why they crucified the lord because they were blinded you know they didn't know that that was the prince of peace some of them had an idea but they but their heart was hardened towards it that they couldn't receive it according as it is written the most had given them the spirit of slumber eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day so from the point that it was written and even before that all the way to this Point here when the Apostle Paul wrote this all the way until today what is today April 9th 2024 the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble and David said let their table be made a snare meaning a trap and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them so the way that the Lord got Jake back in this time as a as a um, punishment was not allow them to come into his truth you know when you go back to where this is written in Isaiah, I'm sorry, in Psalms, the 69th chapter, it speaks about, you know, let them not come into thy righteousness. So if they can't come into the righteousness of the Lord, mean they cannot receive the message, which means they cannot be saved. 
You know, so we that are here are very privileged, you know, and very blessed. And we should give thanks for that. You know, because out of all the Israelites that are out there, you know, the Lord saw fit to bring us in for whatever reason he has. You know, let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. Right, so they will not be able to get this knowledge. Now let's go from there to Revelation 14. Matter of fact, before we go to Revelation 14, let's go to 2 Ezra 9 and 13. And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. Right. And eventually the ones that die on this side, the Israelites that die on this side, will come to the elect in the kingdom of heaven and will be saved. Then answered I and said, have I, I have said before, and now do speak. And what, and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. And that's true. Like as a wave is greater than a drop. Excuse me. And he answered me saying, like as the field is, so also so is also the seed, plenteous. As the flowers be, such are the colors thereof. All, so, colors also, plenteous. Such as a workman is, such also is the work, plenty. And as a husbandman is himself, so is his husbandry also. Plenty. For it was the time of the world. See, so this is the time of the world now. And you have Israelites that make excuses for why they can't come serve the Lord. You know, so on and so forth. But all of that's going to turn against them in the long run. And now when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man spake against me. For then everyone obeyed, but now the manners of them which are created in, in this world that is made are corrupted by a perpetual seed. So this is going back about 24, 2500 years ago. So how much more now in these times? You know, how much more wicked and how much more programmed are these people to do an evil? And by a law which is unsearchable, rid themselves. So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that will come into it. And how much more now that the that the uh, that uh, the knowledge has increased, and you have the social media that's pushing its perverse spirit upon Jake worldwide and upon the world. It says, and I saw and spared it greatly, and have kept me a grape of the cluster. And a plant of a great people. So there is an election. Choices vine. The nobles. The first fruits. Matter of fact. Let's get that. Um, I know there's a few of them. I know there's one in James. I started at 16. James 1 and 16. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. That's right. The inspiration comes from above, not of man. I don't give a damn how well a man can study or how great his memory is. If it don't come from above, you ain't going to get it. Matter of fact, let's go to St. John chapter 3. And 27, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. See? So it comes from above. Every good gift comes from above. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And he doesn't make mistakes. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. We were begotten by the word of truth. This is how we became Born again by the seed of the word of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Shai, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. See? And the first fruits, the, that's the top choice vine that the Lord is going to use to, to bring back the rest of the nation. Let's look up this word first fruits. A parquet, a parquet is to offer firstlings or first fruits. To take away the first fruits of the production of the earth, which was offered to the Most High, the first portion of the dough, which, which all was holy unto the Lord. He wanted the top. That's why he wanted the firstborn. You know, he wanted the first fruits. He wanted everything to be, to, to, he, to receive all the best. 
It's the same thing with the elect, from which sacred loaves were to be prepared, hence uh, term used of persons consecrated to the Most High for all time, which are the elect, persons superior in excellence to others of the same class, right? And the elect are superior to the rest of Jake. That's what you hear Elder Apostle Torah speak about. There's levels to this. And there are levels to this. The scriptures speak about in the book of Psalms, you know, about set thrones. You know, you have King David's throne. Because, of course, you have the Most High, Yahweh Shai. And then on the earth you have um, King David and so on and so forth. So there are set thrones. And there are different levels to that. This is why you have the 144,000, which are the governing body of Israel. And then you have the rest of the Israelites. You know, you have, you know, higher ups in Israel, and then you have the lower in Israel. But even the lowest individual in Israel is going to be great. But he's just not going to be great as the men that are the, as of the 144,000. There are levels to this. All right, so that was it on that. So that's the first fruits. Matter of fact, I know there's more scriptures that go into that word, first fruit. Let me see. Yep, Jake, take that out. Romans 8, 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, we grown, brothers. Few sisters. We grown, man. Not grown as far as in... in you know, grown up, but grown as far as, you know, complaining. <laughs> it says, uh, Romans eleven sixteen. For if the first fruit be holy, see, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. So when those Israelites that die on this side come through the elect, they're going to be holy. Because the first fruits and the lump is holy. Uh, Romans 16 and 5, likewise greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved uh, Epinetus. Who is the first fruits of a Kai unto Yahweh Shai? First Corinthians 15 20. But now is Yahweh Shai risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Uh, verse 23. But every man in his own order, Yahweh Shai, the first fruits after that day that a Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai is at his coming. Because Yahweh Shai has the first fruit. This is why when he prayed uh, that uh, St. John, the 17th chapter, is a prayer of Yahweh Shai for the elect. And as he prayed for the men that were with him, that were a part of the elect, the eleven, he said he didn't only pray for them, he prayed for them that would believe on him through the words that they would speak. See? Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 15, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that, it, that is the first fruits of Achai, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Right. And that's when you're addicted to something, you know, you can't get enough of it. You're constantly going back, fiending, you know, for more. Uh, James 1.18, we just read that. And Revelation 14 and 4, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. And not talking about actual virgins, talking about that they were virgins from the, you know, impurities of the philosophies of this world. They kept the, the doctrine pure. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the Most High and to the Lamb. See? And that's the elect. Beginning with the 144,000, and then you have, you know, everything else that comes in line with that. So that's it on that. So let's go back to 2 Ezra 9 and 21. And I saw and spared it greatly, meaning the cluster, the choice vine. And have kept me a grape of the cluster and the plant of a great people. So now why did the Lord do this? Because he wanted to smoke Israel at one time. He told Moses, look, step back, man. I'm going to smoke all these fools. I'm going to smoke all these fools, man. He told Moses, just step back and let him smoke them. But the reason why he didn't and the reason why he didn't, ain't going to do it now is because he made a promise to Abraham, his friend. See? And he's not going to go back on his word. Not even for his great name's sake. It says, Let the multitude perish then which was born in vain, and let my great be kept, and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. Right. And this and the and this being perfected every day by these words. That's what the scriptures speak about. Um 
the the uh the um I can't think of exactly how it's worded. It's in Hebrews twelve. This is no this is one of my favorites too. Hebrews twelve and twenty three. It says, to the general assembly of, and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to the most high, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. And this is why the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul said, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, meaning perfect in understanding. Not being, well, I, I don't break any law, no. Perfect in understanding. So that's, that'll sit on that. Now, What's going to happen to the ones that are not a part of the elect, that are not a part of that cluster, where well, they're going to be gathered and burnt? Uh, it says, Revelation 14, 14, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, which was a chariot, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, that's Yahweh Shai, having on his head a golden crown, and, his, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Because the Lord, Yahweh was going to give Yahweh Shai the, the, the uh, go-ahead and he's going to set forth the charge. Then him, Michael the archangel, the other archangels and their angels are going to come and get busy. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Right, the harvest of the earth is ripe. And what is the harvest? The end of the world. You can read about that in Matthew 13. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And that's when Yahweh Shai comes back. Remember it said he neither lifted up sword nor any instrument of war or something like that. But only he set a, a, a blast of fire out of his mouth. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire. And that's why I said, you know, don't be surprised if... Once the missiles be shot off and the lasers from the chariots be shot off, there also be fire created by the elements from the heaven and come also down also. Don't be surprised. And cry with a loud voice to him that sat, that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. Now this is talking about a different cluster. This is a different group of people that are cl closely related by wickedness. You have Israelites included in this. All right? And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture. And the winepress was tried without the city, and blood came out of the winepress even upon the horses' bridles, Unto the horses' bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. So there's going to be a lot of dead bodies. Matter of fact, let me leave you with this scripture here in the book of Isaiah 66 and 15. And there's others. It says, For behold, the Lord Yahweh Bashem Shai will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire, because the second death is going to be the the uh, lake of fire, which is going to be caused by the missiles, by the lasers from the chariots, and don't be surprised if you do the same thing you did in Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, have the uh, elements infused within themselves and also big balls of fire come down, you know, and destroy this place. And I'm not talking about the goodness, gracious, great balls of fire. <laughs> Salakia. Uh, for by fire and by a sword will the Lord Yahweh Bashem El Shai plead with our flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. So he's gathering, just like he's gathering his elect, he's also gathering the other cluster to be destroyed. The day cometh that shall burn as an oven. So with that, I pray that you brothers and few sisters have been edified. To the next time I say, Shalom.